incense? Okay. So in just a moment, we're going to begin our Easter Vigil Liturgy. Uh, hopefully this microphone will work outside. Sometimes it does not, so if you hear some silence, this is because the signal may not pick up outside. But we're going to begin outside, and we're going to start with a prayer. We're going to bless the Easter fire. We're also going to bless the Paschal candle. And then uh, if you haven't gotten an individual candle yet, I, I believe they're at the doors. You can get a candle. And as our uh, catechumens come into church, they're going to light your candle, which will be lit originally from the Paschal candle itself. So we thank you all for being here this evening. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. And with your spirit. Dear brothers and sisters, on this most sacred night in which our Lord Jesus Christ passed over from death to life, the Church calls upon her sons and daughters scattered throughout the world to come together to watch and pray. If we keep the memorial of the Lord's Paschal Solemnity in this way, listening to his word and celebrating his mysteries, then we shall have sure hope of sharing his triumph over death and with
coming. Please stand. Exalt, let them exalt the hosts of heaven. Exalt, let angel ministers of God exalt. Let the trumpet of salvation sound all out our mighty King's triumph. Be glad, let earth be glad, as glory floods her, ablaze with light from her eternal King. Let all corners of the earth be glad, knowing an end to gloom and darkness. Rejoice, let Mother Church also rejoice, arrayed with the lightning of his glory. Let this holy building shake with joy, filled with the mighty voices of the peoples. The Lord be with you. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is truly right and just, with ardent love of mind and heart and with devoted service of our voice to acclaim our God invisible, the Almighty Father, and Jesus Christ our Lord, his Son, his only begotten, who for our sake paid Adam's debt to the eternal Father, and pouring out his own dear blood, wiped clean the record of our ancient sinfulness. These then are the feasts of Passover, in which is slain the Lamb, the one true Lamb, whose blood anoints the doorposts of believers. This is the night 
when once you led our forebears, Israel's children, from slavery in Egypt, and made them pass dry shod through the Red Sea. This is the night that with a pillar of fire banished the darkness of sins. This is the night that even now throughout the world sets Christian believers apart from worldly vices and from the gloom of sin, leading them to grace and joining them to his holy ones. This is the night when Christ broke the prison bars of death and rose victorious from the underworld. O oh, wonder of your humble care for us, O oh, love, O oh, charity beyond all telling, to ransom a slave, you gave away your son. O oh, truly necessary sin of Adam, destroyed completely by the death of Christ. O oh, happy fault that earned so great, so glorious a Redeemer. The sanctifying power of this night dispels wickedness, washes faults away, restores innocence to the fallen and joy to mourners. O oh, truly blessed night, when things of heaven are wed to those of earth, and divine to the human. On this your night of grace, O Holy Father, accept this candle, a solemn offering, the work of these and of your servants' hands, an evening sacrifice of praise, this gift from your most holy church. Therefore, O Lord, we pray you that this candle, hallowed to the honor of your name, may persevere undimmed to overcome the darkness of this night. Receive it as a pleasing fragrance and let it mingle with the lights of heaven. May this flame be found still burning by the morning star, the one morning star who never sets. Christ your Son, who coming back from death's domain has shed his peaceful light on humanity and lives and reigns forever and ever. Amen. At this time, I ask you to please extinguish your candles. And let us pray. Dear brothers and sisters, <clears throat> now that we have begun our solemn vigil, let us listen with quiet hearts to the word of God. Let us meditate on how God in times past saved his people, and in these, the last days, has sent us his Son as our Redeemer. Let us pray that our God may complete this paschal work of our salvation by the fullness of redemption. Please be seated.
A reading from the book of Genesis. In the beginning, when God created the heavens and the earth, the earth was a formless wasteland and darkness covered the abyss while a mighty wind swept the waters. Then God said, let there be light, and there was light. God saw how good the light was. God then separated the light from the darkness. God called the light day, and the darkness he called night. Thus evening came, and morning followed the first day. Then God said, let there be a dome in the middle of the waters to separate one body of water from the other. And it happened, God made the dome and it separated the water above the dome from the water below it. God called the dome the sky. Evening came and morning followed the second day. Then God said, let the water under the sky be gathered into a single basin, and that the dry land may appear. And so it happened. The water under the sky was gathered into its basin, and the dry land appeared. God called the dry land earth, and the basin of the water he called the sea. God saw how good it was. Then God said, let the earth bring forth vegetation, every kind of plant that bears seed, and every kind of fruit tree on earth that bears fruit with its seed in it. And so it happened. The earth brought forth every kind of plant that, the bear, that bears seed, and every kind of fruit tree on earth that bears fruit with its seed in it. God saw how good it was. Evening came, and morning followed the third day. Then God said, let there be lights in the dome of the sky to separate the day from the night. Let them mark the fixed times, the days and the years, and serve as luminaries in the dome of the sky to shed light upon the earth. And so it happened. God made the two great lights, the greater one to govern the day and the lesser one to govern the night, and he made the stars. God sent them in the dome of the sky to shed light upon the earth, to govern the day and the night, and to separate the light from the darkness. God saw how good it was. Evening came and morning followed the fourth day. Then God said, let the water teem with an abundance of living creatures, and on the earth let birds fly beneath the dome of the sky. And so it happened. God created the great sea monsters and all kinds of swimming creatures with which the water teems, and all kinds of winged birds. God saw how good it was. And God blessed them, saying, Be fertile, multiply, and fill the water of the seas, and let the birds multiply on the earth. Evening came, and morning followed, the fifth day. Then God said, Let the earth bring forth all kinds of living creatures, cattle, creeping things, and wild animals of all kinds. And so it happened. God made all kinds of wild animals, all kinds of cattle, and all kinds of creeping things of the earth. God saw how good it was. Then God said, let us make man in our image after our likeness. Let them have dominion over the fish of the sea, the birds of the air, and the cattle, and over all the wild animals and all the creatures that crawl on the ground. God created man in his image. In the image of God, he created him. Male and female, he created them. God blessed them, saying, Be fertile and multiply. Fill the earth and subdue it. 
have dominion over the fish of the sea, the birds of the air, and all the living things that move on the earth. God also said, see, I give you every seed bearing plant all over the earth and every tree that has seed bearing fruit on it to be your food. And to all the animals of the land, all the birds of the air, and all the living creatures that crawl on the ground, I give all the green plants for food. And so it happened. God looked at everything he had made, and he found it very good. Evening came, and morning followed, the sixth day. Thus, the heavens and the earth and all their array were completed, since on the seventh day, God was finished with the work he had been doing. He rested on the seventh day from all the work he had undertaken. The word of the Lord. Let us pray. 
Almighty, ever-living God, who are wonderful in the ordering of all your works, may those you have redeemed understand that there exists nothing more marvelous than the world's creation in the beginning, except that, at the end of the ages, Christ, our Passover, has been sacrificed, who lives and reigns forever and ever. A reading from the book of Genesis. In the beginning, when God created the heavens and the earth, God said, let us make man in our image after our likeness. Let them have dominion over the fish of the sea, the birds of the air and the cattle, and over all the wild animals and all the creatures that crawl on the ground. God created man in his image. In the image of God, he created him. Male and female, he created them. God blessed them, saying, Be fertile and multiply. Fill the earth and subdue it, and have dominion over the fish of the sea, the birds of the air, and all the living things that move on the earth. God also said, See, I give you every seed-bearing plant all over the earth and every tree that has seed-bearing fruit on it to be your food. And to all the animals of the land, all the birds of the air, and all the living creatures that crawl on the ground, I give all the green plants for food. And so it happened. God looked at everything he had made, and he found it very good. The word of the Lord. Let us sing to the Lord, he has covered himself in glory. Let us sing to the Lord, he has covered himself in glory. I will sing to the Lord, for he is gloriously triumphant. Horse and chariot he has cast into the sea. My strength and my courage is the Lord, and he has been my Savior. He is my God, I praise him. The God of my Father, I extol him. Let us sing to the Lord. The Lord is a warrior, Lord is his name. Pharaoh's chariots and army he hurled into the sea. The elite of his officers were submerged in the Red Sea. Let us sing to the Lord, he has covered. The flood waters covered him. They sank into the depths like a stone. Your right hand, O Lord, magnificent in power. Your right hand, O Lord, has shattered the enemy. Let us sing to the Lord. He has covered him. You brought in the people you redeemed and planted them on the mountain of your inheritance, the place where you made your seat, O Lord. 
the sanctuary, Lord, which your hands established. The Lord shall reign forever and ever. Let us sing to the Lord. He has covered him. Let us pray. O God, who wonderfully created human nature and still more wonderfully redeemed it, grant us, we pray, to set our minds against the enticement of sin that we may merit to attain eternal joys through Christ our Lord. The second reading, the book of Exodus. The Lord said to Moses, why are you crying out to me? Tell the Israelites to go forward and you fill up your staff and with hands outstretched over the sea, split the sea in two that the Israelites may pass through it through dry land. But I will make the Egyptians so obstinate that they will go after them. Then I will receive glory through Pharaoh and all his army, his chariots and charioteers. The Egyptians shall know that I am the Lord when I receive glory through Pharaoh and his chariots and charioteers. The angel of God who had been leading Israel's camp now moved and went around behind them The column of cloud also, leaving the front, took up its place behind them so that it came between the camp of the Egyptians and that of of Israel. But the cloud now became dark, and thus the night passed without the rival camps coming any closer toward all night long. Then Moses stretched out his hand over the sea and the Lord swept the sea with a strong east wind throughout the night and so turned it into dry land. When the water was thus divided, the Israelites marched into the midst of the sea on dry land with the water like a wall to their right and to their left. The Egyptians followed in pursuit. All Pharaoh's horses and chariots and charioteers went after them right into the midst of the sea. In the night watch, just before dawn, the Lord cast through the column of the fiery cloud upon the Egyptian force a glance that threw it into a panic, and he so clogged their chariot wheels that they could hardly drive. With that, the Egyptians sounded the retreat before Israel before the Lord was fighting for them against the Egyptians. Then the Lord told Moses, stretch out your hand over the sea and that the water may flow back upon the Egyptians, upon their chariots and their charioteers. So Moses stretched out his hand over the sea and at dawn the sea flowed back to its normal depth. The Egyptians were fleeing head on towards the sea when the Lord hurled them into its midst. As the water flowed back, it covered the chariots and the charioteers of Pharaoh's whole army, which had followed the Israelites into the sea. Not a single one of them escaped, but the Israelites had marched on dry land through the midst of the sea, with the water like a wall to their right and to their left. Thus the Lord saved Israel on that day from the power of the Egyptians. When Israel saw the Egyptians lying dead on the seashore and beheld the great power that the Lord had shown against the Egyptians, they feared the Lord and believed in him and in his servant Moses. Then Moses and the Israelites sang this song to the Lord I will sing to the Lord, for he is gloriously triumphant. Horse and chariot he has cast into the sea. The word of the Lord.
Third reading. From the third reading, Baruch. The prophet Baruch. Hear, O Israel, the commandments of life. Listen and know prudence. How is it, Israel, that you are in the land of your foes, grown old in a foreign land, defiled with the dead, accounted with those destined for the underworld? You have forsaken the fountain of wisdom. Had you walked the way of God, you would have dwelt in enduring peace. Learn where prudence is, where strength, where understanding, that you may not know also where any length of days and life, where light of the eyes and peace. Who has found the place of wisdom? Who has entered into her treasuries? The one who knows all things knows her. He has probed her by his knowledge, the one who established the earth for all time and filled it with four-footed beasts. He who dismisses the light and it departs, calls it and it obeys him trembling, before whom the stars of their posts shine and rejoice. When he calls them, they answer, here we are, shining with joy for their mask maker. Such is our God. No other is to be compared to him. He has traced out the whole way of understanding and has given her to Jacob, his servant, to Israel, his beloved son. Since then, she has appeared on earth and moved among people. She is the book of the precepts of God, the law which endures forever. All who cling to her will live, but those will die who forsake her. Turn, O Jacob, and receive her. Walk by her light toward splendor. Give not your glory to another, your privileges to an alien race. Blessed are we, O Israel, for what pleases God is known to us. The word of the Lord. command 
O oh God, whose ancient wonders remain undimmed in splendor even in our day for what you once bestowed on a single people, freeing them from Pharaoh's persecution by the power of your right hand. Now bring about, as the salvation of the nations through the waters of rebirth, brought about by the salvation of the nations through the waters of rebirth, grant that the whole world may become children of Abraham and inherit the dignity of Israel's birthright. Almighty and ever-living God, sole hope of the world, who by the preaching of your prophets unveiled the, the mysteries of this present age, graciously increase the longing of your people, for only at the prompting of your grace do the faithful progress in any kind of virtue, through Christ our Lord. Amen. Please stand. sacred night radiant with the glory of the Lord's resurrection. Stir up in your church a spirit of, the do of adoption, so that renewed in body and mind we may render you undivided service. Through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, God forever and ever. Amen. Amen. Romans 6, 3 to 11. Brothers and sisters, are you unaware that we who were baptized into Christ Jesus were baptized into his death? We were indeed buried with him through baptism unto, unto death, so that just as Christ was raised from the dead by the glory of the Father, we too might live in the newness of life. For if we have grown into union with him through a death like his, we shall also be united with him in the resurrection. We know that our old self was crucified with him so that our sinful body might be done away with, 
that we might no longer be in slavery to sin. For a dead person has been absolved from sin. If then we have died with Christ, we believe that we shall also live with him. We know that Christ, raised from the dead, dies no more. Death no longer has power over him. As to his death, he died to sin once and for all. As to his life, he lives for God. Consequently, you too must think of yourselves as being dead to sin and living for God in Christ Jesus. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. When the Sabbath was over, Mary Magdalene, Mary, the mother of James, and Salome brought, brought spices so that they might go and anoint them. Very early, when the sun had risen, on the first day of the week, they came to the tomb. They were saying to one another, Who will roll back the stone for us from the entrance of the tomb? When they looked up, they saw that the stone had been rolled back. It was very large. On entering the tomb, they saw a young man sitting on the right side, clothed in a white robe, and they were utterly amazed. 
he said to them, Do not be amazed. You seek Jesus of Nazareth, the crucified. He has been raised. He is not here. Behold the place where they laid him. But go and tell his disciples and Peter, He is going before you to Galilee. There you will see him as he told you. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, Lord. There is an indefinable, mysterious power that pervades everything. I feel it, though I do not see it. It is this unseen power that makes itself felt and yet defies all proof, because it is so unlike all that I perceive through my five senses. It transcends the senses. These are the words of Mahatma Gandhi, and although he is not a Christian, he speaks to what people have thought about throughout the ages, that there is something else, something beyond what our five senses uh, can help us to understand. And we see this all throughout literature. There's a, a famous scene in Shakespeare's Hamlet, when Hamlet says to his friend Horatio, he says, there are more things in heaven on earth, Horatio, than are dreamt of in your philosophy. So there's just so much more. And Hamlet, throughout that play, is looking for, you know, he's highly idealistic. He's looking for something else. He's looking for more. And one of the reasons that uh, the Irish and the English people actually were fair, not, I wouldn't say easily, but open to being converted to Christianity because that is rooted in that Celtic spirituality. They spoke and wrote often about the thin places in between, the places where time seems to be suspended and we're stepping into something that's veiled by we don't know what, but there's something more that is present. So throughout this sacred triduum, beginning on Thursday night, in our reflections, we've been thinking about and praying about the fact that there's always something more. That with God in our lives, the passion and the death, the things that are horrible and ugly, are not the end. That with the resurrection of Jesus, there is something more. And I used a couple of examples how, you know, family becomes family. And you grow as a family and then more people join the family and you become family, and practice leads to practice. And I used the example of our choir, who are just doing such a magnificent job. Their practice has become our practice, the practice of worshiping God together here at Mass. And then the ultimate thing that teaches us that there is always something more is the sacrificial love that Jesus offers on the cross. On Holy Thursday, at that last supper, it wasn't merely a farewell meal. It was Jesus instituting the sacrament of the priesthood, the sacrament of the Holy Communion, telling his disciples that you have to go out and serve in my name, and everyone is called to do that. And yesterday we reflected as we engaged more deeply in the passion of our Lord. It seemed like just a horrible defeat but we know it to be the greatest victory there ever was. And how is that and why is that? Because there is always something more. God has lifted that thin veil through the power of the resurrection of our Savior, Jesus Christ. The death of Jesus was not the end. It was the new beginning that speaks to all of us about the eternal life that God wants each and every one of us to participate in. 
So this evening we have such a blessing, our four catechumens are going to be received into the church. They've been working um, with their, their sponsors and Sister Bridget and our RCIA team. And tonight, uh, Kurt and Danny and Quinn and Sloan will receive their sacraments. And if you were to speak to each one of them, their journey is unique and different, and yet it's the same. Because they know there's something else. Their senses will be engaged tonight. They're going to be washed clean by baptism. They're going to be chrismated. They're going to you know, receive a candle. They're going to be prayed over. Their senses will be fully engaged, but that's merely scratching the surface of that veil. The veil that we're cutting through that God offers to them, as he has to all of us, the grace of eternal life through the sacraments. So we are so grateful for their presence here tonight and for all of you being present as we share in this celebration together. So I'd just like to share very briefly, this is uh, some insight from a, a Father Charles Irvin about this sense that there's something else, there's a veil that God is, you know, sort of lifting from our eyes that we're engaged in. And if you think about the gospel that we just heard, they go to anoint the body of Jesus early in the morning. All of the gospels refer to the fact that they go to the tomb early in the morning. And what's it like early in the morning as you look at the horizon? It's hard to tell where the last day has ended and the new day has begun very purposeful by each of the gospel writers that they put it early in the morning because they want us to understand that we're going into that thin place we're piercing that veil of eternity as we celebrate the resurrection of our savior so i'll conclude with this very brief uh, reflection and again it's just from father charles Irvin, and this is what he writes the joy of today has yet to be brought to fulfillment and completion our ancient enemy, the devil, still slouches toward us with his intent to devour us. We do not move from baptism to the rapture without passing through our valleys of darkness. What we do have, however, is the power to overcome any darkness that attempts to blind us and swallow us. We do have the power to roll away the stone, the tomb of our own hearts, to be healed of the scales that cover our eyes and to have hearts filled with love instead of hate, minds that seek to find the truth rather than settle for lies. We have, because of Christ's resurrection from the dead, the power to be victims no longer, to walk now in the glorious freedom of the sons and daughters of God. Our spirits can now be young again, young, clothed in white light, filled with energy, announcing to those around us, he is risen as he said he would. He is risen from the dead. Father Nordeman and members of our parish assembly, I am happy to present Daniel Devine, Kurt Ringen, Quinn Wiles, and Sloan Wiles, who are asking for initiation into the community of the faithful.
Bishop on Holy Thursday. And if you listen to the prayer of exorcism, the truth to be told, we all could use a prayer of exorcism because it asks God that these four might come to know what is good and choose to do it, but also to know what is evil and to turn away from it. And so we pray. Almighty ever living God, you sent your only Son into the world to cast out the power of Satan, spirit of evil to rescue us from the kingdom of darkness and bring us into the splendor of your kingdom of light. We pray for these catechumens. Set them free from original sin. Make them a temple of your glory and send your spirit to dwell with them. We ask this through Christ our Lord. Amen. Daniel, Kurt, Quinn, and Sloan. We now anoint you with the oil of salvation in the name of Christ our Savior. May he strengthen you with his power, who lives and reigns forever and ever. Amen. Amen. Dear friends, we humbly invoke upon this font the grace of God, the Almighty Father, that those who from it are born anew may be numbered among the children of adoption in Christ. Almighty, ever-living God, be present by the mysteries of your great love and send forth the spirit of adoption to create the new peoples brought to birth for you in the font of baptism, so that what is to be carried out by our humble service may be brought to fulfillment by your mighty power, through Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. 
O God, who by invisible power accomplish a wondrous gift through sacramental signs, and who in many ways have prepared water, your creation, to show forth the grace of baptism. O God, whose spirit in the first moments of the world's creation hovered over the water so that the very substance of water would even then take to itself the power to sanctify. O God, who by the outpouring of the flood foreshadowed regeneration so that from the mystery of one and the same element of water would come an end to vice and a beginning of virtue. O God, who caused the children of Abraham to pass dry shot through the Red Sea so that the chosen people set free from slavery to Pharaoh would prefigure the people of the baptized. O God, whose son, baptized by John in the waters of the Jordan, was anointed with the Holy Spirit as he hung upon the cross gave forth water from his side along with blood, and after his resurrection commanded his disciples, go forth, teach all nations, baptizing them in the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Look now, we pray, upon the face of your church, and graciously unseal for her the fountain of baptism. May this water receive by the Holy Spirit the grace of your only begotten Son, so that human nature, created in your image and washed clean through the sacrament of baptism from all the squalor of life of old, may be found worthy to rise to the life of newborn children through water of the Holy Spirit. And may the power of the Holy Spirit, O Lord, we pray, come down through your Son, and to your Son into the fullness of this font, so that all who have been buried with Christ by baptism into death may rise again to life with him, who lives and reigns forever and ever. Amen. Dear brothers and sisters, through the Paschal Mystery, we have been buried with Christ in baptism so that we may walk with him in newness of life. And so now that our Lenten observance is concluded, let us renew the promises of holy baptism, by which we once renounce Satan and his works and promise to serve God in his holy Catholic Church. We're now going to ask our catechumens to make a profession of faith and to commit to turn away from sin and evil, and we will uh, do that in communion with them at this time, showing our solidarity together in Christ and renew all of our so, to our catechumens and all present, do you renounce Satan? I do. And all his works? I do. And all his empty show? I do. Do you believe in God the Father Almighty, I do. Creator, I do. Creator of heaven and earth? I do. Do you believe in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who was born of the Virgin Mary, suffered death and was buried, rose again from the dead, and is now seated at the right hand of the Father? I do. I do. Believe in the Holy Spirit, Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and life everlasting. I do. And may Almighty God, the Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, who will be out to give you a new birth by water in the Holy Spirit, bestow on us his forgiveness of our sins, and keep us in his grace. Christ Jesus. Daniel, I baptize you in the name of the Father, in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of
of the Holy Spirit. youngest member of our group here, and she will be confirmed with her class in a couple of years, so she'll be preparing for that, but we're also going to give her a special uh, prismation, in other words, she's going to be anointed with the sacred prism, also best blessed by the Archbishop uh, on Holy Thursday, and it's a sign that she has received initially the Holy Spirit, and she'll receive the fullness of the Holy Spirit when she receives her confirmation. God the Father of our Lord Jesus Christ has freed you from sin, giving you a new birth by water in the Holy Spirit, and welcomed you into his holy people. He now anoints you with the chrism of salvation. As Christ was anointed priest, prophet, and king, so may you live always as a member of his body, sharing everlasting life. Dear friends, Quinn, Sloan, Kurt, and Danny, you have become a new creation and have clothed yourselves in Christ. See in the white garments that you now wear the outward sign of your Christian dignity. With your family and friends to help you by word and example, bring that dignity unstained into the everlasting light of heaven. Amen. 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 Deacon Bill has lit one of the candles from the Paschal candle. And all of them will now receive the light of Christ. And it's a reminder that they have been brought in to the Paschal mystery of Jesus. The passion, the death, and the resurrection of Jesus. The friends, 
Receive the light of Christ. My dear parents, godparents, this light is entrusted to you to be kept burning brightly. These friends of ours have been enlightened by Christ, and they are to walk always as children of the light. May they keep the flame of faith alive in their hearts. When the Lord comes, may he go out to meet you with the saints in heaven forever. Amen. Amen. Dear friends, the Lord Jesus has made the deaf hear and the mute speak. May he soon now touch your ears to receive his word and your mouth to proclaim his faith to the praise and glory of God the Father. Amen. Amen. <laughs> So at this time, we will now have the confirmation for uh, Kurt and Danny and, Qu and Quinn. Dearly beloved, we pray to God, the Almighty Father, for these his adopted sons and daughters, already born again to eternal life and baptism, that he will graciously pour out the Holy Spirit upon them to confirm them with his abundant gifts and through his anointing conform them more fully to Christ, the Son of God. Almighty God, Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, who brought these your servants to new birth by water and the Holy Spirit, freeing from them from sin. Send upon them, O Lord, the Holy Spirit, the paraclete. Give them the spirit of wisdom and understanding, the spirit of counsel and fortitude, the spirit of knowledge and piety. Fill them with the spirit of the fear of the Lord, through Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. John, be sealed with the gift of the Holy Spirit. Peace be with you. Marie, be sealed with the gift of the Holy Spirit. Peace be with you. Andrew, be sealed with the gift of the Holy Spirit. Peace be with you. So dear friends, we have prayed for these servants who now the gift of the Holy Spirit have been confirmed. Planted in faith and grounded in love, may they bear witness to Christ our Lord by their way of life. And we pray this through Christ our Lord. Amen. And we welcome our four newest members into our faith at this time. Please stand.
Trusting in the love our Father has for us, we turn to him now and offer our prayers. That the power of the resurrection fill the church, empowering each Christian to spread the good news of the risen Christ, we pray. Lord, Lord hear our prayer. prayer. That the peace of the risen Christ, which surpasses understanding, wash over our nation and world, bringing unity and harmony, we pray. Lord, Lord hear our prayer. prayer. That the God of creation, who found it very good, bless and increase our efforts to restore, protect, and enjoy the natural world, we pray. Lord, hear our prayer. That the risen Christ, who suffered death for love of us, renew our parish this Easter and give us an ever greater share of his spirit, we pray. Lord, hear our prayer. That those who were ill might receive divine healing, we pray. Lord, hear our prayer. Loving God, graciously hear the prayers of your children gathered in this holy place, shaking with joy. Through the merits of Christ your Son, lead us into your kingdom where you live and reign forever and ever. Amen. Amen. Please join in singing our presentation hymn, Jesus Christ is risen today.
pray, friends, that my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. Except we ask, O Lord, the prayers of your people with the sacrificial offerings, that what has begun in the Paschal Mysteries may by the working of your power bring us to the healing of eternity through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. Lift up your hearts. We lift them up to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is, it is right and just. just. It is truly right and just, our duty and our salvation, always and everywhere to give you thanks, Lord, Holy Father, Almighty and Eternal God, through Christ our Lord. It is truly right and just at all times to acclaim you, O Lord. For Jesus is the true Lamb who has taken away the sins of the world. By dying, he has destroyed our death, and by rising, restored our life. Therefore, overcome with paschal joy, every land, every people exults in your praise, and even the heavenly powers with the angelic hosts sing together the unending hymn of your glory as they acclaim. by sending down your spirit upon them like the dewfall, so that they may become for us the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ. At the time he was betrayed and entered willingly into his passion, he took bread and giving thanks broke it and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it, for this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when the supper was ended, he took the chalice. And once more, giving thanks, he gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it, for this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many, for the forgiveness of sin. Do this in memory of me. The mystery of faith.
Therefore, as we celebrate the memorial of his death and resurrection, we offer you, Lord, the bread of life and the chalice of salvation, giving thanks that you have held us worthy to be in your presence and minister to you. Humbly we pray that partaking of the body and blood of Christ, we may be gathered to one by the Holy Spirit. Remember, Lord, your church spread throughout the world and bring her to the fullness of charity. Together, with Francis our Pope and Nelson our Bishop and all the clergy. Remember also our brothers and sisters who have fallen asleep in the hope of the resurrection and all who have died in your mercy. Welcome them into the light of your face. Have mercy on us all, we pray, that with the Blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, the Blessed Joseph, her spouse, with the Blessed Apostles, and all the saints who have pleased you throughout the ages, we may merit to be co-heirs to eternal life, and may praise and glorify you for your Son, Jesus Christ. Through him, and with him, and in him, O God, Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours, forever and ever. Savior's command, informed by divine teaching, we dare to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from Deliver us, Lord, we pray, from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress. We wait the blessed hope and the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, Peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church, and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. Amen. Peace of the Lord be with you always. And with your spirit, let us offer each other the sign of peace. away the sins of the world. Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I am
expense for the distribution of Holy Communion, we're going to invite uh, Kurt and Danny and Quinn and Sloan to come forward first. This will be uh, their first Holy Communion, so this will complete for the three of them their sacraments of initiation. Also, for anyone uh, who is in need of a low gluten host, the communion station for that will be right in front of the pulpit up here to my right, your left, and the extraordinary minister will be on this side of the altar rail. You can just come forward at any time if you need to receive a low gluten host and come to that station right there. Thank you.
So I'm uh, grateful in so many ways for so many different people, our, our parish staff who have done so much to help us prepare for this uh, Easter celebration. I'm grateful for um, James and Sparks and our choir who <coughs> continue to, to lead us in such a wonderful way to give praise and worship to our God. I'm grateful to our ushers, to our readers, our older servers. Tonight we have Jude and Billy and Peter and our just are grateful to all of them because they, all the servers have been helping throughout this triduum. Um, I'm grateful uh, to and for Deacon Bill. He's been ever present, especially if I've been not feeling so well recently, and he's been a great support, so I'm, I'm truly grateful to him as well. Um, I already mentioned Sister Bridget and the RCIA team. They did a, such a great job of preparing these four, and uh, I really think it was such a joyful uh, opportunity tonight because they were in part so well prepared. So, Sister, thank you. And, Thank you to all of our sisters for all that you do and your, your presence here at our parish. It, it truly is a blessing to all of us. Um, so I have a feeling that I probably left somebody out, but I'm just grateful. Thank you all. <laughs> That's all I can say. So, And then last but not least, uh, I want to wish all of you a happy Easter, and in particular to, to Quinn and Sloan and to Danny and Kurt. Uh, this is your, your first Easter as a Catholic, and we, we're truly grateful that you're here tonight, and we celebrate with you, and may God bless you always. So. Let us pray. Pour out on us, O Lord, the spirit of your love and in your kindness. Make those who have nourished by this paschal sacrament one in mind and heart, through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. Bow down and bless you. May Almighty God bless you through today's Easter solemnity and in his compassion defend you from every assault of sin. Amen. Amen. And may he who restores you to eternal life in the resurrection of his only begotten endow you with the prize of immortality. Amen. Amen. Now that the days of the Lord's Passion have drawn to a close, may you who celebrate the gladness of the Paschal Feast come with Christ's help and exulting in spirit to those feasts that are celebrated in eternal joy. Amen. Amen. And may the blessing of Almighty God, the Father, and the Son, and the Holy Spirit come down on you and remain with you forever. Amen. Go in peace, hallelujah, hallelujah.